Okay, I think I'm gonna have to do it this way. So I'm gonna just do it in instructor view. Because uh, so if it had been a real student, there would be a way for me to um, do it. But uh, when it's uh, uh, Oh, time already started. So let me do this one. I think this is a question that I haven't done before. So, um, yes, yeah, sorry about the whole. Uh, I, I'm kind of learning these quirks of the uh, system as I go. Um, so we'll just work on this question. We have like 10 minutes, not a lot of time. So I'll just do this question and play with the myopomet settings later. Okay, so it says, consider the ballistic pendulum shown below. The spring in the launcher is compressed, and when it is released, it launches a still ball. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is the lab that you are doing uh, this week. That's, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, we did the conservation of energy lab. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the still ball is embedded into the catcher, and the catcher applied. Assuming that the spring constant of the launcher is k, what is the launch speed of v naught of the still ball? If the still ball was in, okay, it feels like I can just use conservation of energy. Um, so what it's uh, with all the information that they are giving, um, they are trying to give us the initial potential spring potential energy that it starts with. So we'll say, okay, my initial spring potential energy, one half K delta X squared, and it starts out with the zero kinetic energy. And at the end, all of that spring potential energy will be gone. It will be have transferred elsewhere, and it will have transferred into the kinetic energy. So we say this is equal to the final kinetic energy of the ball. And in this case, I'm just uh, kind of shortcutting some of the steps in the interest of time. And also because it's uh, particularly simple. So, so yeah, they are asking for this Vina. Vina is uh, just doing the algebra in my head, square root of k over m um, times delta x. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Still, ball is a lower case set. <laughs> Um, okay, if we imagine that the ball is launched and embedded in the catcher, to what height h does the still ball catcher assembly, right? Yeah, so this is the thing that you have to be careful about, and it's the subject of your pre-lab for Wednesday's lab. Um, you have to treat this uh, interaction in two parts. So there's part one, which will be the collision. So you have the catcher that's... Uh, uh, sees the ball coming in with some speed, v naught that we calculated above, and this is going to get embedded. And once it's all embedded, they're going to be moving together at some speed. Let me call it um, v final. And in this interaction, we can say that the uh, momentum is conserved. And energy is not conserved because it's a sticking collision. It's a totally inelastic collision. And, but we can use momentum conservation to work out this uh, expression. You're not done there because it's asking what height does it rise to. So you have to work out part two, where you'll be reasoning through, OK, so I got this thing of some mass uh, m plus m moving at some speed of a final. And it's going to be swinging up to some position at some height. And I guess this is how you should measure height. And at this height, its speed will be zero. And in this interaction, hopefully, you have enough sense that um, energy is conserved because um, no non conservative force does work here. The gravity is the only force doing any work that will go into gravitational potential energy. Tension force, it, uh, I guess in this arrangement, it might be a little bit harder to see, but think, you know, as it's uh, intuitive enough that tension force here doesn't do work. Um, so you have to work through that. Uh, once you have worked through it, you will have expression for H that you can relate in terms of other things you know. 
So I'm going to treat this v naught as a given quantity, just so that my expression will be simple. I have v naught from part A, so I'll just use that. So let me work through part one. Um, that will be the conservation of momentum. So I have, I say my total initial momentum is equal to total final momentum. So total initial momentum is a small m v naught. That's going to be equal to the total mass small m plus big M times V final. So V final is equal to ratio of the masses times V naught. Pretty simple. It, it, with these questions, the hard part is the conceptual part. So uh, the math part is actually pretty simple. That's uh, what I love about conservation law strategies. Okay, energy conservation. So we start out with the total initial energy at the bottom here is equal to the total final energy. And we'll make things easy for ourselves and say that at this high, potential energy is zero. So I just have the kinetic energy initial. If I did write initial potential energy, that would be zero. The final energy. So at the top where the speed is zero, the final kinetic energy will be zero. And we'll have the final potential energy that we can write in terms of H. So initial kinetic energy should be one half the total mass, uh, sum of the masses times uh, the initial speed, which is confusingly labeled V final here, <laughs> V final squared, is equal to um, final potential energy. That will be the sum of the masses, G times H uh, labeled here. Yeah, what height does it reach? Okay, uh, let me do a couple easy simplifications. Masses cancel. Um, and I think I see the step. So I have H here. I want to solve for that. I don't technically know V final, but I can work out it out from here. So having done all that in my head, <laughs> H is equal to um, 1 over 2G times um, the mass squared. Wait, I did something. Oh, um, oh, no, no, it's fine. I, I think that's right. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's make sure I didn't miss something. This is the problem of doing algebra in your head. Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. So um, when people don't do this correctly, I think it, this factor here, uh, like if people mistakenly assume energy is conserved through the collision here, you end up coming up with a factor here that's, uh, that's not squared. Uh, it's supposed to be squared. Um, H is equal to 1 over 2 times G uh, times mass squared over sum of the masses of squared times V naught squared. Uh, v naught is from A. Um, okay, uh, the catcher is now modified to catch the steel ball with a spring-loaded assembly identical to, okay, uh, how does the height that the ball catcher assembly compare to, oh, the, the answer here is actually simple, uh, the answer is it doesn't change. Because really, when you go back and look at how we analyzed this part, we simply made no statement about energy. We didn't say it was conserved. We didn't say it wasn't conserved. So what matters is that the momentum is conserved and with this new mechanical setup, momentum will still be conserved. So the fact that the energy goes into the potential energy of the spring, hey, that's great. We don't care <laughs> because uh, it, uh, so um, in working out, post collision speed, uh, all that matters is that the momentum is conserved, uh, which it still is. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And indeed, it says even though they are identical, when the compression uh, is found, the spring the always compressed less. Explain why. Um, and I guess the, uh, yeah, let me do the explanation first, and then we'll try to come up with that expression. 
So um, explanation, it comes down to, let's see. Um, so I think I should draw three snapshots. So you should visualize. I always recommend that you visualize a setup. So your setup started out with this kind of a snapshot where um, everything you had uh, was in the, the spring potential energy here. So let me call this my snapshot A, uh, where you had zero kinetic energy, all potential energy, max. And this fires, and you have a ball that's moving. Um, all of this maximum potential energy went into here. So here is where you have maximum kinetic energy. And um, so this is my snapshot too. And now as this gets embedded, I guess this time uh, with a counter spring here. So in this, uh, in this situation here, um, so you have some kinetic, some potential energy in the form of the compressed spring. And from the answer for V final that we worked out up here, we know that this assembly is moving at some speed. So your kinetic energy here is not equal to zero. So um, in order to have some situation where the compression, it compresses the same amount, you would need to have one where the kinetic energy goes back down to zero. And short of just supporting the catcher so that it doesn't move as it collides, it's not going to happen. It's really while this was launching, initial momentum was transferred to the system. And um, until you take that out, it'll be required to have some kinetic energy. So, so yeah, that's the reason. So let me put the explanation. explanation. Um, compared to the very initial setup in A, uh, where all the initial energy was in the potential energy of the spring, uh, the moment after the collision, the ball catcher assembly must have some kinetic energy um, consistent with the conservation of momentum, and this um, reduces the amount of potential energy available uh, associated with the spring compression. So that's an explanation, and uh, let me work it out. So the explanation also gives you some idea of how to express this. I guess um, since the setup was set up explicitly to make energy conserved, I guess we can start out with uh, conservation of energy because uh, now in this new setup, energy should be conserved. If it's not, then somebody messed up. Uh, so this is going to be my initial, uh, very initial. And this is going to be my final. And I can actually skip the in-between. Like, can I? Yeah, I, I, well, because I already know V final, I think I can skip the in-between step. <laughs> Um, otherwise, I would need the in-between step to get some sense of free final. Uh, because uh, from initial to final, momentum isn't conserved because of the act of launching. So total initial energy is equal to total final energy. And uh, total initial energy was in the spring potential energy here, 1 half k delta x squared. I think that's all the symbols we used is equal to now the total final energy that's split into two parts. There's the kinetic energy, one half the sum of the masses times V final squared, plus there's the uh, potential energy, which will be the spring potential energy here, one half K and delta XC squared. Um, yeah. So yeah, everything here is known. I'm just going to treat V final as a known quantity since we calculated it. Wait, um, I guess it's in the work, but so let me just uh, say, uh, define V final is equal to uh, 
m over n plus n times uh, free not uh, free not from a above yeah because I don't think I actually wrote out free final yeah okay um, so yeah let me just uh, solve this for this delta x of c um, so doing the in my head. Uh, so, you know, slow down and <laughs> verify I didn't make a mistake because there's a chance I am making a mistake. Uh, square root of delta x squared uh, minus, uh, okay, times of we find law squared. Yeah, and so this portion makes this less. Uh, the amount to catch the spring compresses is delta x c is equal to it is lowercase c is equal to square root of delta x squared minus divided k times of the final squared uh, we final defined above and uh, the dimensional analysis is a little tricky um Unit of k, <laughs> um, it's got a lot of units. I think one of it, the units is kilograms per second uh, squared, maybe. <laughs> if that's right, then the unit here work out. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, yeah. All right, I, I think that's all. Um, we are over time for the session. So um, yeah, so this is one of the questions. Let me just add the work. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, let me add the work. So because I'm not in test student mode, nothing's actually going to save it. Um, the instructor's preview mode, it doesn't get saved anywhere. Um, so I, I, I don't know what is the point of me adding work, but let me just add it for the sake of completeness. Maybe I'll learn something new about the Myocometa system, as I seem to be doing now. Um, Right, so that's it. Uh, let me submit it then. Um, um, yeah. And once I do save work and continue, then I won't be able to see any of this. So let me at least capture it and record it fully. Um, so these were my answers. What is the speed? Um, and what is the height? Um, explanation and explanation and answer for delta exit.